you're live. We're, I'm really excited. I got to thinking, um, which is sometimes dangerous, that um, this whole idea of the cultural district initiative has sparked our group beyond belief. And, and I'm thinking that with the things that we've come up with, and thank you for all of you who've done so much background work in one week, that I think that through this initiative, we have inspired ourselves to look at not only a potential grant, but if we don't get the grant, we have our work cut out for us for the whole year because we're starting to do this kind of research and, and needs assessment of the cultural assets. And it's, when you really think about it, it's a phenomenal step. So um, I wanted to just have us think about that in rather than focus on this little tiny spot, but to think about the next 11 and a half months, and we've done more work than we ever have done in January, which is usually a quiet month, and all of a sudden it's piled with things to accomplish. So um, I want to thank you for all, for all the work that you've put into this. Um, I, and this is in spite of COVID, you know, so it's even, it's even more remarkable. Uh, just a couple of um, questions and updates, and then we can weigh in on what our thoughts are for this potential grant. Uh, in the meeting with Luis last Thursday about this grant, um, he mentioned, and I think I forwarded the email to you, he mentioned a letter to Julian and Sarah our representatives so that uh, we at least as a cultural district would say thank you for this grant that got a fire under us. So is there someone who could just do two or three sentences that we could send off as a district to uh, Julian and, and uh, Sarah? Are you saying prior to us getting the grant? Yeah, we don't get like, yeah, yeah, like thank you for this opportunity because they fought like crazy to get money for this. Grant. Oh, they did. Yeah. They I, I could do that because, um, you know, MEF's a selectman and he's been in touch with them. Oh, that would be perfect. So I will do that. Um, and we've actually in the past had visits from um, Sarah. She was at our um, opening ceremony for the whale sculpture on Cove Road. Oh, and um, is this a, a, a physical letter or an email? I'm, I'm sure they're happy to get an email letter. Okay. All right, thank you. Yep. If you decide to do it, we have stationary. Contact Sherry. Oh, okay. Uh, thanks, Bonnie. I think it's important. Um, yep. Let's see, the second thing was uh, this coming Thursday, Luis, has a check-in for all cultural districts. This one is going to be on public art. If uh, some of you are interested, you can let me know after the meeting and we'll send you the link. And you can sit in and find out what the MCC thinks about public art and what other districts are doing. Um, you know, we have that sort of in our long range plan. Uh, today is a photo op for blue lights. Is there someone who's available sometime this afternoon uh, working with um, the chamber? Lisa will do the photograph and the little mini article. Um, and so far we've reached 23 businesses personally. So let me know if what you're time? available. I'm Joanna. Pardon? What time? Um, I just need to check with Lisa, and if you're interested, I'll get back to you. Okay. All right, I'll send it out. Uh, let me see. Light person. Pardon? I was saying Claire's our blue light contact person. But, yeah, I, I was supposedly, but Joanna did all the work. I did nothing. So. <laughs> Isn't that what executives do, Claire? <laughs> Delegate. <laughs> Delegate. Um, Bonnie, another, you know, we're... Uh, Mary and Gail have explored different uh, funding resources. You've been talking about warrant applying for consideration in the warrant at town meeting once a year. 
under, you know, I think we should go forward with that. Oh yeah. And um, if you could find out the date that that has to be in, we need to yep. write three or four sentences, maybe even only three that defines us and what we want to do with that. And then we submit it to be printed on the warrant. And then it goes under, if I have it correctly, and you can check you know, with your town resources, um, it will go under social services along with the chamber probably. So generally they give $2,000. So that's a really, you know, if we get that in the, in the spring at the spring town meeting, you know, that gives us some operating uh, expense money. Okay. And it's discretionary funds. Uh, let me see what else. Other funding that, that I've explored in an informal questioning um, of some members of the Orleans Cultural Council. And I've also been a former, I'm a former chair of that group. Um, they are open, and I sent this to Mary. I don't know if she forwarded that to you, Gail, that there are funds that the Orleans Cultural Council has that could be applied to the needs of the Cable Museum. So that means that we can literally, because of the questions we've asked concerning this grant, we can apply, and both there are two funds that this would qualify under and they're both discretionary funds. So you don't need to even um, turn in uh, reimbursement requests. So, um, and just to tell you a little bit about those funds, both of them are to help support artists and to help educate the public in terms of artists. So we have access, one is an endowment and one is a gift fund. And they have sent they have sat there for the last year unused. So it's time for us to think about using them. So I could speak with 95% confidence that the needs of the Cable Museum can be met by, by us writing a request of you know $250 or whatever is required. And... Um, I think we need to move on to the... Yes, I have, and one other comment that Mary made about the June 30th deadline in the meeting last week, uh, Louise said that to do everything possible to get the money spent by June 30th, but if because of COVID, we don't always know that we could be able to go beyond June 30th in order, you know, like one of our programs in order to... Um, spend the money in that way so it's not it's not cast in cement what he recognized and i'm just going to add because i was sat in on the meeting um is that he knew that in many communities that the summer was a critical time and so he said if you can you can use the funds um you know you could encumber them and use them through the summer but not beyond the summer oh good that's good yeah so it really kind of takes some of the pressure off. Um, all right, so I think, um, does everyone have a copy of the guidelines and the purpose of the grant? Yeah. And, and you've reviewed that. Do we need to read that into this meeting? Um, Pam, you're not, Pam. You're muted. You're muted. Sorry, I said I'll attach them to the minutes. Okay. So we're familiar with the purpose, purpose and the um, eligible and ineligible expenses. Mm -hmm. All right, so I think maybe if we could just, uh, Gail, who else, Bonnie, maybe you, and do you wanna to speak to some of the thoughts that you might've had? I think you and Mary have some thoughts. Uh, Claire and I have worked on this, so. Sure. Um, let's just each kind of, talk a little bit about what we think for the next few minutes. Well, I think Mary and I both felt like to support the people that make us a cultural district, the businesses and institutions and stores that are really the reason we're a cultural district. It would be great to reach out to them, say, how can we help you in this time? Um, and give them the opportunity to 
either take our suggestions or let us know what would help them for small increments. Um, and I loved what Pam said when she said, we can always give people more, <laughs> you know, if, if only 10 people respond and we have, we can spread it out a little thicker. I think that's great. Mm -hmm. So I think what um, Mary did to put this list together with emails, um, my recommendation would be just to email the representatives for each of these people on our list and say, basically, we'd like to help you. We have, we may have, we may, have um, a grant to distribute and the questions are there and we just ask them to respond within a certain period of time mm -hmm. so that we're not hamstrung with it. I think even the gesture of saying we recognize you, um, yeah. the yeah. Oregon Cultural District recognizes you and if we can help you in this way. Mm -hmm. So I felt I felt like it was a good um, a good use of our money and a real support to those people. So I think we both, Mary and I both came to that conclusion. Right. I want to commend you on the questions that you came up with. Because when we first talked about this, I thought, oh my word, we can't be like the um, art fairy sprinkling snowflakes of dollar bills. It's, you know, just not quite the right concept. But I thought your questions were really good questions. And if we can seriously work through this survey, it's actually a, a need survey. I, I didn't read it. Can you go I over the questions? It. I, I didn't see it. No, can you go I, over the questions? Oh, Mary said it yesterday, yeah. sure. Yeah, it's under Mary's email. Right. Well, let's just, Gail, can you just read us the questions? I can read them really fast. There's yeah. okay, great. Go ahead. Would an amount from 150 to $250 be an aid for publicity for events or services available now that would increase your business. If you have walk-in traffic, do you need a hand sanitizer station? These cost about $100 each. If you are a performing arts or exhibit, exhibit entity, would it be a help to have a grant of $150 to $250 to purchase or rent audio visual equipment to prepare videos for internet distribution or other outreach. I even thought the museum might want to put up a, a, you know, an exhibit, you know, even a um, video of what they have currently on. Mm -hmm. And then what other needs do you have that a small grant would assist you to accomplish? So maybe they have something like, mm -hmm. we want to buy a banner for the front of the store that says, come on in. So um, those were the four questions we came up with. Pam? Can I amend to the um, hand sanitizer and just say for um, COVID protection supplies such as hand sanitizers, masks, cleaning supplies? Sure. Because, you know, some places they might have hand sanitizer, but they might need, you know, they like places like to have just a bunch of masks to get people who don't wear them or yeah. they yeah. need all that, you know, bleachy stuff mm -hmm. to clean with. Mm -hmm. I think since you're mentioning a dollar amount, maybe the question question could just be a small amount. So you're not, you know, people are going to be a little more broad in their thinking, you know, we'll get a better assessment of what they think their needs are. Um, be an up to number. Pardon? An up maybe to number? Up to number. Oh, yeah. up to. Oh, That's a good idea. Either up. range or else they'll keep dreaming. Yeah, up to. <laughs> I would at least, if I were oh, writing, okay. I'd like to yeah, figure out what you think. All right. Um, any <laughs> other comments on the questions? I would prefer, I mean, you had talked about when you did the blue light that you contacted people by phone. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, it wouldn't be bad to reach out to the people by phone if they then wanted to do like a follow through on, on a survey. But I think the personal contact to... Um, you know, just as a friendly voice uh, would be important. I yeah. can speak to that. I did not know that this would happen, but little mini conversations online or by phone were incredible. In just a minute or two, we became people that I felt like were just part of this new group. And I agree with Claire. I think that telephoning, even if it takes longer, this is something that we can work with for the entire year. 
Mm -hmm. um, and those, I mean, just- How many organizations were on the list? 39. But do you mean the list that was on her email attached that she called Tuesday? Um, I, did, I did not get a list of businesses that she's contacted yet, but 39 phone calls, if you just did five a day, you'll okay. I volunteered, I volunteered I think only, to do that. Right. I, I think she only sent the questions and that list to um, like Joanna and the committee people. Um, I think the rest of us, I mean, I got one from her that said Tuesday that had a list of um, who did get um, the MCC funds, which wasn't complete. But oh. I think what you guys are talking about, she didn't, it didn't get sent around to everybody. Right. Oh. Okay. So the question on the MCC funds, Louise addressed that and the, this last round of funds went to, um, as Peter knows, went to the Academy and smaller organizations that are usually overlooked when there's facilities grants, when there's larger grants. And um, Mary mentioned the uh, cultural um, center in uh, Yarmouth and they received a facilities grant and a number of other large grants. And so it was the, that kind of explains why the smaller um, organizations received grants on this most recent round. Um, I think, Bonnie, if you do the, that research, this gives us something to work on all year. Yeah. yeah. Um, I wanted to mention that in the particular, in um, aid for publicity for events is something that small businesses never have time for. So I think we can partner with the chamber. I think our new person, our liaison with OIA, Karen, is an excellent writer. I, I would suggest we ask her to perhaps to do some local interviews and highlight okay. local businesses okay. or artists. Okay, can I um, just focus on this? We're looking at having this grant in by the end of the week. And so I think we need to be very, very focused on this conversation on what are we going to ask for for the $7,500. So I, I wanna move us back. I think you're, we're, we're sort of going beyond um, the scope of what we need to get done today in the next 20 minutes. February, not January. We're talking yes. about yeah. getting this grant. The deadline is um, the middle of February. However, okay. he's trying to roll out the money uh, earlier than that. So he had said oh. if he gets 20 applications um, by the end of this week, that he'll be able to move that more yeah. quickly and get us the money quickly. So that's, okay. that's really why we're okay. aiming to get something um, up there very quickly. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, go along those lines and, and looking at what 39 organizations, if 39 organizations each applied for um, $100 in support, that's $4,000, which is um, more than uh, I had anticipated when we were looking oh. at possible um, use of the funding. So I think we had also talked about if we collect the information and then do as other committees do, provide access to other resources for the money. So if, for example, uh, you know, I think Joanna, you had said that Nauset um, Disposal might be somebody who would be willing to donate uh, some of the, um, the sanitation stands, uh, you know, on that. And so I think that it's a, it should be a combination. I don't think it should necessarily be, I think, if we can phrase the conversation, even with the businesses of saying, we are looking to gather resources for people, we may have access to a small grant. And we also believe that there are other resources in town. It's like, it's doing the legwork for them of like, where can we find these small pockets of money? So I think that is a stronger piece. And then as, you, as we broaden out and, and ask other people to help with the resources, you also broaden the influence of the Orleans Cultural District. So yeah. to me that, I don't think it should just be that the district has money and it's gonna parcel it out. I think it should be, we can be a resource for you to find support for what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. So, um, because I feel very strongly with this grant that, and looking at the work that's been done um, that it's been primarily you, Joanna, with the old firehouse, I believe very strongly that we need a coordinator. Um, and I looked at the timing and, the, and if we were looking at the, um, 
access through the summer and having somebody support all of the programs, the 15 organizations that have used the firehouse, the 10, 10 workshops we had suggested, all those pieces. I was looking at taking $5,000 from this pot and funding, um, partially funding, it doesn't even get to the full amount, uh, a part-time coordinator for 24 weeks at 12 hours a week at $20 an hour. That comes to $5,700. So it's, we have, if we were looked at set $5,000 from the grant and then use the $500 that we had set aside previously for this, we're close to that and close enough. You know, you could say 11, it doesn't have to be 24 weeks and we know, you know, it could be an average of. So I feel very strongly that in order to get things moving and, and, and listening to Luis, he's talking about a quick start, a, a recovery start. I mean, if you were to look and say, there were 15 organizations or 15 things in a week going on at the old firehouse. If you were trying to revive that, you have to reach out to those organizations, make sure that they have the equipment and supplies that they need to, to meet the COVID requirements. And then looking at the workshops we were doing, you have to make sure those people are, are set to do it and have, have the equipment. I, th I think the bulk of the money should be set aside for getting somebody on board who can make that happen. I don't believe that we can do it as volunteers. I really don't. I think it's, it's way too much. As volunteers, I think we could reach out to organizations and find out what they need and pull that together and sort of hand it to the coordinator and say, okay, you know, we need this and how do we, how do we go about that? Or they all need help with marketing and we need to do a, a joint marketing piece. Can you do, do something um, with this? So to me, I think that if we set aside $5,000 out of the 7,500, and then even if you looked and say, you know, if you want to look and say, then with the 2,500 that's left, if you want to have that very loosely defined as supplies and equipment to help people um, deliver services, that that can be a loose definition and could help contribute to the money um, <clears throat> that the organizations might need. But I believe that as, as the cultural district that the, of getting something moving and getting people understand it's moving, it's going, we're, we're doing things, we're on Main Street, we're getting ready to reopen, we're, you know, we're trying to pull this together. That I think is, is more critical and would be, um, would be uh, agreeable to the state. They will only, when we, I asked specifically about funding a coordinator for this, Luis's comment was, if it were associated with programs, you know, if like you can't just have it as a standalone. So if we say yeah. we're going to reinstitute those 10 workshops we had planned, we're going to expand that. We're going to get those other organizations to have their programs running. We're going to help them market it and get it, get it so that they can deliver it. To me, that makes it allowable. But <clears throat> I think I, I honestly believe that um, you know, and looking at the stats of what had been going on, I don't think we can continue without a coordinator. I, I admit to my bias and I sent you um, all of the statistics for the past three years. The uh, amount of activity that was going on in that building was shut completely down due to COVID. One of the points of this grant is to eliminate vacant buildings in your district on Main Street. I feel this is an opportunity for the district to step up. I would like to see all of this particular grant go to the old firehouse. And if we don't, I just to bring it down to cut and dried, we're gonna hang a banner that says old firehouse on the light post in front of the old firehouse and it is going to be vacant. And that does not help all those little businesses in that circle of people who surround businesses that surround the old firehouse, the left bank gallery. There's the cure wellness. I could go on and on, new businesses, old businesses, all are part of this central network. And to have an empty building, I mean, 
but I don't think it. I don't think it eliminates the outreach to the other organizations. I don't, I don't want to. I don't want to eliminate. I don't want. I mean, personally, I feel like we need both. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to the old firehouse, the the job description to me was generic. I'd like to see some more goals in there. I'd like to see mm -hmm. somebody who who had an un, you know. It just felt generic to me. And of course, right. we'll have to take applications from more than one person. But I think we do need to beef up the job description to include what are your goals? What do you see? What is your vision with an understanding of what this program is about? Right, right. But right. I, I mean, I can see putting a chunk toward that, but I, I personally don't want to see the whole Mm -hmm. Grant go in that one direction. I think the other organizations need support or at least need to know we care about them. Right. I think when we do this survey and we start becoming the, the, um, the guideline or the guide that helps businesses is really and truly our role. We have grants through the Orleans Cultural Council. We have programs through the chamber. There are other ways a, a, a businesses will individually cooperate. As an example with Ace Hardware, anyone who couldn't pay for lights got them free. I mean, this is, this is um, not necessarily what every business would do, but businesses are out there to help each other. And we can be that central person, that central organization that connects everyone. And that's Joanna, how Joanna I, I agree with you. Um, the the few people that I spoke to before this all happened, um, you know, what, what they thought originally was, well, how much money do you need from us? Or, you know, what do you, what do we have to contribute to be part of this? And so the, there was a misconception about what we were there for. So the more we do for the community, the more we're going to get back from them. The, the people were, like, how can I help you? What can I do to, so I think there's a lot of um, man, woman power out there mm -hmm. from the gallery owners and other people that they're gonna be happy to um, spread the word, put it on their website, you know, things like that and publicize events along with us. So, you know, I really, I feel strongly that we need both, but I also feel like um, I'd like to help people and throw them a bone. <laughs> so they, I mean, that's crude, but mm -hmm. you know, here we are, we're here to help you. We're new. We want you to know about us and you know, what do you need? Mm -hmm. So I would is there a combination? That. I mean, but if I said, you know, like if I looked at it and said, <clears throat> I think we need something somewhere between, 10 and 12 hours a week for that whole period, um, you know, that doesn't use the whole grant. So the other portion of the grant could be targeted towards if, if and if we say it generically enough in the application that we're looking to, to have equipment and supplies um, that can help um, organizations within the district deliver their services in a, you know, in a, in a safe way. I mean, some of those services could be at the firehouse and some of those services could be at their site, you know, so like if they were going to do a workshop or something, you could say, well, we have, we have a clean space for you here, right. um, yeah. you know, which could then highlight what your organization is doing where it is. So, I mean, I think that that's what we need to just decide at this point is whether we can agree on the general sense of this absolutely there needs to be a better job description. We don't have to put that job description in the proposal, except to right. say that this person would be very targeted to provide services around X, Y, and Z. And yeah. that's all that needs right. to go in there. Right. Um, but I, so I think the question becomes one of, are we agreeable and, and how, how do you feel about that, the dollar split, because that's basically what we need to come to agreement now is like, there's, we're gonna apply for the full $7,500. I'm assuming that we're gonna get the full $7,500. Um, but, you know, I don't know for sure, but then we can just say, how do we wanna split it up? Do we like what we're suggesting? So 
can we do a combination of the different things and what would be the proportional split? It's one comment that the old firehouse has been a meeting place for numerous businesses where there really is not as of this, at this point, a place where uh, the real estate people can meet with 25 um, members, which they have done over the past two years, other organizations, the chamber board, numerous people feel that that is a space that is theirs. And that's rather unique, I think, where they feel that they can come in, they're on their own, they can run their meeting, do their whatever they need to do, connecting, networking, um, and then they're out and there's no responsibility. They make a small donation. So in a way it serves all businesses. Um, so that could be added to the survey. Did you know you can use mm. the, you know, the old firehouse? And then that brings, you know, here, here's another resource for you. I, I like the idea of surveying them and finding out what resources they need. Because then again, <clears throat> let's say you found that there were 39 organizations and you said, all right, so half of them need $200 to do X, Y, and Z. So we say, okay, well, we can pull a little bit from this pot. We can apply for with the local cultural council for this pot. We can go and solicit donations from X, Y, and Z. So it doesn't have to all be out of this funding, but absolutely <laughs> to position it so that that's what is being done. And I, li I like the idea of like a coordinator that, that focuses on like getting stuff moving, doing it, you know, getting it recovering and, and reopening is, you know, the words that they use. But I also like then, then the appropriate use of a volunteer, ta you know, district committee to me is the outreach, the collaboration, the identifying the needs in the community. And then that gets fed in to like a, a person that can, help make things happen so right i'm wondering if we could use the town if the town will give us money we could use that money towards a, paying somebody as well right because that that right. money we can use at our as you said at our discretion discretionary and if yeah. we had this person in place there are donations still coming into the old firehouse which can be funneled to continue that person's work beyond the summer and yeah. if we get that warrant funding, we're, we're just actually creating the, a, a central place for the cultural district to reach out. We could invite Channel 18 to come and do a workshop with businesses and help them connect so that, I mean, it, it, that could be organized so that we're meeting their needs and having someone write about it. So I really, I really, um, it's a, we're visionaries. And I think if we look at this from, you know, the little bird looking down at this three mile wide town in the middle of water that we can make this connect, help make connections happen through that, through having a central place. Uh, so Peter, we haven't heard from you. You're thinking very hard. <laughs> maybe he's muted maybe he's not hearing peter yes. oh I'm do here. you want to add to the conversation no i mean i i think your uh ideas are are right on to make these things happen and you know splitting up the funding is a good one um i think on the um the survey i i i'd probably just think about going at a, some kind of an upper limit um, rather than, you know, 125, 150 to 250. I think I, you know, if you're willing to do up to 250 or 300. I just say that, you know, it's up to, and that way people would be a, little, a lot more uh, flexible on how they might choose to respond. Okay. That makes sense to me. And I would say probably, 75% of the grants I apply for, you don't get the full amount you ask for. Yeah, you know, it's pretty common that you say, I want 50,000 right. and they give you 25. Right. right. I mean, and I think, you know, for that, my, my wife does the uh, scholarships and the grants for the garden club. And one thing we found with uh, <clears throat> the teachers was that 
you know, when it was like $500, they kind of started to back off because the effort that they had to put in to request 500 bucks, they didn't do it. So they're actually looking at what they're, they're going to be doing and, and using higher dollar, dollar limits, be it for scholarships or some kind of a. Right, right. Using their efforts. It, it, uh, it, yeah. I don't think this so is. We, we need to, if we're going to do this small thing. We, we need to make it, you know, it's the KISS method <laughs> that. Um, you know, it, keep it simple, that? stupid, right? To, yeah. To oh, right. yeah. Yeah. I think that's a good thing about doing the personal contact. Cause if you don't do, well, I mean, I do grants mm -hmm. in my sleep every day now, but if you don't do that many, you're kind of scared yeah. um, about how you're going to do it. So I think having that contact where there's somebody you can always ask questions who can right. say, Oh, you know, you don't need to, you know, have a five-year projected budget of, you know, mm -hmm. how the, Effects so, of you know, you know, you know, the personal really I think can allay a lot of the fears and a lot of the stress and worries, and things like that. And with the survey that you're doing, which is giving us a phenomenal foundation of where where to go, what if there's five or ten people who say they have a need that's similar? Then you can address those ten groups or ten businesses and see what we can do to pull together ten people. You know. Okay, so Joanna, Interesting. Who, who's who's the contact person for, or the email, or you know, what do how are we handling that for for them to respond? Well, you, if you're making the phone calls, would you not be taking notes, and then we would take that yep. data and work I will. If they up. if they want to email, um, should, I, should I give my email yeah, out? You you can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I found that emailing with the blue lights, I, I met more people online than I'd meet walking down the street. <laughs> okay, so I I'm- think, Yeah, one last comment, and that is, this is not an either or, this is all. This is using our data to move forward for the whole year, using this grant money that we didn't even know about a week ago and having a big plan. I, I see us doing it all but in phases, obviously. Okay. okay, so listening, knowing that we have to get this in and want to get this in so that we're in the first round who receives, which also means you're probably more likely to get the full amount, you know, because he wants to move this money out. Then if we move the um, part-time coordinator down to 10 hours a week and use some of the money that we had set already encumbered, we're more, more taking like out of the 7,500, we're taking like 4,800, uh, dollars, which leads $2,700 for supporting organizations um, to make that happen, which is, you know, then if you say, well, 10 organizations apply for um, $100 each, that's one thing, or five organizations need 200, and then we find other matches for that money. I think that that's the point is to say, if we have a portion of funds and then you go to another organization or something and say, okay, we can give them $100. Can you match that hundred dollars? That's a, 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 a lot more attractive, um, you know, piece for them, you know, like, okay, we know we're going to get you this and we'll help you look at that. And then, you know, it, it broadens the support of the group to a, to a, a bigger pool. So um, I'm just looking for, is there agreement that we can ask for a part-time coordinator for like around $4,500 or $4,800 and then set the other, the remaining money and ask for the full, we're gonna ask for the full amount um, towards supplies and equipment um, that can be used by both at the firehouse for activities that wanna happen there and at the various organizations uh, that are a part of the cultural district. Is that, do, do everybody, can we agree that on that as the major thrust, and then we deal with all the details of what the person actually should be doing and how, you know, what the job description is, and then how we want to um, reach out on this uh, allocation. And I, I like the idea. I think, I think if we even can say the in the equipment, and I think in the budget narrative portion, you can make a bigger descri description of what you're actually gonna do with it than you can in the actual summary of the grant. So if we had like supplies and equipments, you know, and said <clears throat> members of the cultural district are going, or will be reaching out um, personally to each of the organizations, blah, 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 to see 
what their uh, needs are as well as, well, you know, so I think that that way, is, is that agreeable to people, that split? Agreeable so we, to me. Yeah. yeah. So Claire, we, we, don't have to, we don't have to have the businesses all lined up. and. So no, 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 oh, no. There's okay. no way you can oh, do that oh, in time. No, no I, <laughs> vote, I vote we just do it as you just said it. Yep. That's okay. my motion. <laughs> all right. Somebody second it and let's vote. Seconded. Okay. And then I think oh, we I raise roll. our hands or. We have to do a, a roll call. Okay. So. Oh. Claire? Uh, I agree. Bonnie? I agree. Peter? Agree. Pamela? Yep. Gail? I agree. And of course, uh, I agree. <laughs> all right. So it, it's going to be uh, purposely vague in the proposal, but, but specific enough to let them know that it's really going to happen. That's what they want to know. They're looking at to say, can you really pull this off? That's exactly what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. And so I think if we say we have begun to, to, to survey the blah, 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 you know, and anticipate, you know, blah, yeah. we have, we have hired this um, with our, based on applying for this grant, we have used the allocation and and we will be bringing someone on in mid February whatever whatever we decide but it's it's moving quickly they want to know yeah. can you move quickly mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the other thing Louis did say the is they want to spend the money it, you know so we just need to send this in and have them be so delighted they just can't resist sending it yeah and claire include the um, the questions that we've been discussing as well as the list of who are contacting I'm not sure we'll have room for that because it's it's all on the computer or whatever, and we can say okay. we have developed a four a four question survey, okay. something like that. Okay, I was thinking how you pad it to make it look better, but there's no padding space. No, <laughs> I know. Joanna well, said, "Can we send attachments?" I said, "No, you can't." No. You know, okay. when they say two thousand words in your description, no, two thousand you know, characters, two thousand characters, it's little. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, we, Claire, um, I will send you, I've, I've been amending the questions as we've talked, so I will send you what I've come up with, just great. so you have that in your back. Great. Right. great. Um, Gail, could you send that to everyone? That Absolutely. Would be yeah. Thank Absolutely. You. Can you also send around that list, the 39 organization list? Yes, please. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I'll then our, our description, our, our 250 word description, which we had really said the Orleans Cultural District applications for a coordinator and supplies to recover and rebuild the range of arts and community activities caused by COVID in the old fire, in and around the old fire or on Main Street, in and around the old firehouse. Or, I mean, it's not, and I don't want to just say Main Street because we expanded the district. So. Yeah. Um, now, you can say throughout the, the Orleans Cultural District, yeah. because okay. that, if they look it up, they can see. Okay. But I would include Main Street in there somewhere since they said Main Street in the- Yeah, uh, they the did. Apartments. Good point. Oh, good including idea. Including Main Street. <laughs> okay. I would maybe say, you know, on Main Street as well as other outreach throughout the district or something. Yeah, well, so we'll have to, um, yeah, 250 characters is not a lot, so we'll do- well, uh, uh, yeah. Okay. So we're going to get this around and probably we'll send it up, um, you know, to George and we'll send it to you guys at the same time, trying to get that uh, sent to him tomorrow. Um, and so that's, uh, that'll allow us to be in the first group, which I think, I think is going to be really important. It's going to be important because it also shows we're ready to go. Luis, yeah. we're ready to go. So well, I think the process and in, in getting this coordinator, how how do we advertise for that or whatever? I think you have to do it through the town basically because it's a town, um, you know, it, it'll be a contract, contracted worker to the town basically. Okay. And so, then um, Nancy did that first job description based on the town requirements. So that's why it sounded a little bit, you know, um, Generic. Generic. Yeah. It's very generic. So, so um, that's something that can be developed. And we have asked to have George review whatever we decided this morning. And we've asked for, for an appointment with him tomorrow. Okay. So he can weigh in and we'll make adjustments according to his input and we'll send notes to you all. Okay. Okay. Sounds you guys good. did amazing work. 
<laughs> so okay, we are going to focus. Do. We're going to focus on the old firehouse, but then make sure that it's expanded. You know, working on that because I'm looking at the text that we had developed, which is really pretty much around the old firehouse, and then we're going to want to expand that to say, you know, and and we're looking to and you know to ensure that those other members of the cultural district have the ability. Okay, we have to expand well, the, the that. One thing that's kind of cool about the survey is that we're being, we're going to be telling them that the old firehouse is available. Right. Oh, and so it is, yeah. it is yeah. a tie yeah. then to the old firehouse, you know, yeah. we'll give you a hand sanitizer, but, but you can <laughs> use it at the old firehouse, you know? Right. Right. Okay. Wow. All right. This is exciting, everyone. It's a great so way to start. Thank you all. Do we need one? Are we getting one at the old firehouse? Uh, we're closed. So, uh, so yes. when we open, I, I am sure the town would be a part of that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, hopefully we can, it's a town building, so the town will pay for that. But if they won't, we'll do it. Yeah. Wow, you know, very exciting. Because I also think that the old firehouse or whoever is delivering workshops in the old firehouse, even though you talked about the, um, that there are musicians and everyone that have like the plexiglass and everything, that I would guess that the artists who are doing the workshops or however, if somebody's delivering something, that there needs to be partitions set up in the old firehouse. So that yeah. that's another thing that you can encourage people to use that facility because it is set up with COVID right. guidelines. Right, right. That's so. perfect. Good okay. Point. All right. So Pam, Thank we you. did pretty good, Pamela, for you. Yep. I'm ready to pop up and run to hyannis. Okay. okay. Have a good one. Can we have a move uh, um, uh, motion adjourn. to adjourn? adjourn? I move that move that we adjourn. All right. All right. Second. Thank you for your work. Okay. All right. Thank you guys. Bye, Very bye, helpful. Guys. Bye. bye, -bye.